Hey, welcome to Ink the Escape. My name is Wes, and today I'll be sharing with you a couple of tips and tricks on how to create a flourish similar to this one. Um, this one took me around about a half an hour to create, so we won't be creating the whole thing. I'll just be giving you some uh, pointers on how it was made. Cool, let's open up Inkscape. Right, there we go. Now, the default for Inkscape normally is a A4 uh, portrait. I want to work in landscape, um, so we need to go to document properties. Document properties is Control, Shift, and D. I like working with millimeters, and we hit landscape, and job done. You can also access it through file, document properties. I like working with shortcuts, um, which I'll be sharing with you along the way. If you hit number five, it'll zoom in onto the page. Now to create the flourish, we basically use one tool, and that's the Bezier tool. I'm not too sure if that's how you pronounce it, but there we go. And this is the tool over here. Now when you select it, you get two options, a couple of options up in the top left hand corner, your mode and your shape. Um, mode, you get regular and you get spiro. Um, spiro, I think, is just a term used for smooth paths, um, which is the one we're going to be using, uh, mainly using, and um, the shape. Um, we'll be applying a shape to it. I'll explain a little bit more later. Right, so what we'll do is we'll just take a spiro, let's create the main stem, click one on the second click. If you drag it out, you get handles. Don't worry too much about the shape, as you'll see what happens now. When I right-click to end the path, it smooths everything out. If you hit S, or if you just go to your pointer tool, um, and double-click, you'll see your paths, your nodes for your path. All right. It does take a little getting used to, so I suggest just playing around until you figure out how the nodes work and how the paths work because some weird things can start happening when you start crossing over s certain points right the other thing you'd need to open is under path you got path effect editor and when you click on your path it shows you the effect that's been applied to your path first is the spiro spline which has made it nice and smooth second is the pattern along the path which is the triangle. Basically there's been a triangle that's been stretched out along this path. As you can see, it goes from the base of the triangle all the way to the tip. Right, what we can do is you can adjust the width, the thickness. So normally for the stem I'd start pretty thick. Let's say six. Yeah, I don't exactly like the way it looks, so that's fine. Let's go and drag a couple of nodes out. Nice. And I just hit 5 again to realign it. Okay. <clears throat> that's basically how you create a flourish. Let's create another one. Triangle in over there. You just keep on creating. What you can do is, if you select it, you can duplicate it. Control D for duplicate. And you got H and V. If I hit H on the keyboard, it goes horizontal. V is vertical. So you can do things like that. B for Bezier. This time, what we'll do is we'll use the regular path. We'll keep triangle in. We just use two little paths. One click, second click will drag it out, so you got handles, right click to end the path. There you go, you got a little shape there, if you control D to duplicate, move it out a little, bring it down, double click it, bring up the nodes, shift them along, make it a little thinner, 0.5, whatever your preference is, right. The other thing I also did was, uh, sorry, with the Spiro tool, triangle in, created 
a little vine shape. As you can see, there's a couple of things that haven't really worked here. Is that the, the the distance between the two points is quite far. So what I want to do is go and add another node to it. So if I double click on the path, I'll get another node over there. Great. The other thing that happens is that when the when they intersect, when the path intersects itself, you can land up with a white section, which I don't like. I don't want to see that, and I want to see how the path looks complete. So we need to go to the fill options. Um, Control Shift and F will give you fill options. On your fill, you've got two little buttons here. One will give you the intersector point, the other will make it disappear. And that's what I want to do, make it disappear. All right. I'm going to change the width of it. 0.5, or whatever you want. Yes, move it around. You get the idea. The other shape is the ellipse. Ellipse is the same thing really as the triangle, but it's just a little uh, elliptical, I suppose is the word. It just gives you a different shape to work with. Right. There are a few other things that I have done to create this. Firstly is I created a leaf, which I'll show you now in a few easy steps. And this, which is basically a leaf on the end of the spiro. So what we'll do is if you select the object, hit 3, it'll zoom in. Now you need to go object to path. Because this is, you can't really affect any change besides moving the nodes around. If I wanted to do what I'm about to do, we need to go object to path, um, which can be found under path, object to path, or you can hit control, shift and C, and there you go. You now have all your nodes along the path. What I normally do, I'm going to delete the one closest to and drag out. And there you go. A little leaf shape on the end of the spiro. Now if I want to create a leaf, it's very simple. What I'll do is grab the bezier B. I won't be using spiro, I'll be using regular, I'll be using no shape. And it's four nodes. So it's one, two, three, four. We'll join them up there. I hit S for select. Okay. Three to zoom in. And just drag the outline. Like such. And you can play around until you get the shape that you want. Let's see. Sometimes. No, that's fine. I mean, if you wanted it to have a rounded edge on there, what you can do is you can go back to your full, which is Control Shift and F. On your stroke, you have round joint, which you can do that, but it doesn't really apply for us because we're just going to fill it in anyways. So we don't need a stroke. Oh, we don't need the stroke. Right. Excellent. There you go. The second one we'll be doing is creating a teardrop shape. In Bezier tool, we'll be using the spiral on this one with no shape. Don't need to worry about the handles. Do a shape something like that. Right, now nothing's smoothed out. Well, so what we do is you go and double click, select all the nodes except for the last joining node, and hit symmetric make symmetric and what you end up with is that it smooths all the nodes out
Here you can play around with it until you decide on a shape that you like. I'm going to fill it with black, get rid of the stroke, fill it with black. And um, it's just a little something I add on to the ends of the sp on the spirals. So if I just uh, duplicate it, Control D, well, Control D, and what we can do, just shrink it down, move it along. I'm just going to add it on this one. Can hit V and H, V, scale it up. And once you've hit select, so if you hit it once, you get your scale and move, and hit it again, you get your rotate, and you get your pivot point. You can move your pivot point to more or less where it is, the end of the object. So that needs a little bit of editing, so I'm going to drag that out a little. You get the idea. Hopefully, that has shown you a couple of little tricks, and you should be able to end up with something like this. Hope you enjoyed. My name's Wes, and this has been Ink the Scape.